back over and resets every day. So like a year from today's date is what they calculate. So if I don't release videos, then it's not going to pick up any more watched hours. So I'll be losing a lot of watched hours, basically. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I see. So, oh, okay. oh, that's good. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, they changed the algorithm, man. They made it hard for everybody to make it. <laughs> it's more of a challenge. Hey, challenges make us great, man. Right. Another challenge, I guess. Yeah. But hey, everybody, how you guys doing? My name is Sean Christopher Jenkins. This is my guy uh, on my right, Justin Lee Howell. All right. So we're coming at you with another video today. So just in case you don't know, uh, I have the best social media pages ever, so you should totally go to it. All right, so here they are right here. All right, and then also make sure to go to Justin's YouTube channel, Chaplin's Log, and his Facebook page, Sean Christopher Jenkins. So we got a treat for you guys today. So like I said, I introduced the video talking about how I have the best social media pages ever, right? So when my screen comes back, then I can show you guys. All right. Um, what was I going to? My social media pages? Yeah. So I posted something really dope on my Instagram page, my Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. So typically when I post on my Instagram page, I post everywhere else on my other social media pages as well. So uh, on my Instagram page today, so on Trouble Don't Last, my Instagram page, my other Instagram page is also my underscore day underscore Bible, like you saw right here. So I posted this today. So let's do a video on this quote of the day, guys. So like, all right, so the quote of the day is this. It says, the place your greatest pain is the place where you hold the most kingdom authority for his strength is made perfect in your weakness all right so i'm gonna read it again so the place of your greatest pain is the place where you hold the most kingdom authority for his strength is made perfect in your weakness so you'll see anytime i post anything on my social media page like i really utilize the caption area so this is the caption and so typically with the caption if i'm going to post something I'm going to write like, you know, stuff that goes with this post. So like, obviously this is talking about prayer and how prayer is powerful. So anything I talk about quote wise or scripture verse wise is going to be, you know, referring to stuff that relates with this text. Right. Mm -hmm. So I did the same thing with this one. So the place of your greatest pain is the place where you hold the most kingdom authority. I said the same thing in the caption. I said, you know, you're let me zoom in so everybody can see it because I know nobody can see that on. Uh, online is that better justin yeah i see right. yeah it says uh your minute your misery is your ministry that's one quote that i posted then another quote was you know god often uses our deepest pain as the launching pad of our greatest calling right another quote is the extent of your wound can mean an extension of your mission field so this is y'all get the point man like there's a reason for the pain that you're going through. There's a reason why you're suffering. There's a reason why you're struggling. There's a reason why you have a burden in your heart. See, way back in the day, right, on my YouTube channel, Upload Pass Crossroad, I got to look for it, all right? So while I look for it, I'm going to just say it, and then I'll let Justin talk. But I did a video a long time ago talking about how your burden is your calling. I talked about how your purpose is found through your pain. Like, so I'm going to look for that video. So I can reference it, but Justin, I'll let you say what you want to say. I yeah, and I do have to say, your misery is your ministry would also have been a good YouTube name. Yeah, uh, we were talking about titles for this video. Uh, I think we settled on your your pain is your. Oh shoot, I already forgot. Anyway, mm. yeah, this, uh, and I I really like um, the quote that Sean shared because that makes me think of like a Romans chapter five. I think it's like verse three or four or five. It talks about like suffering, like suffering produces perseverance, like per perseverance produces character and character produces hope. Like that hope doesn't put us to shame either. I've, I've actually been, uh, I recently saw Shawshank Redemption again, cause it, it's just a good movie. Morgan Freeman's always a plus. And it was interesting because like one guy got put into solitary confinement. Um, and he was talking about like hope and he was saying like hope is a good thing maybe even like the best thing because like good hope never dies like he had hope in solitary confinement but morgan freeman's character was saying like hope is a dangerous thing like it can kill a man it can drive them crazy but like that's i feel like that's what the world wants to make you think 
like you're so they want you to focus in on the, like the suffering and the pain part they say you're entitled to feel angry or be mad at the world but no the your suffering actually gives you validation to talk about those things we said on this channel before like going through the pain going through that suffering it lets you it lets you know like the raw elements of that suffering because uh it if you're if you're a family member died and you just hear all of these um uh condolences like oh i'm so sorry we all loved your mom or all loved your dad i've had some friends who say they get angry when they hear that because it almost feels empty but i had one friend uh who also lost their mom and they were able to connect to other people the my other friend who lost their mom because they went through that same suffering it's like they know how that feels like they know the raw parts of the broken world and then that's that's everything it's like you don't want to hear uh you don't want to hear like nice words from somebody who just doesn't know you want to hear like validation you want to hear like uh real hope and like that hope comes from pain like it's a uh, like the verses that say like um being refined through fire like any metal in order to become more pure has to go through like that fiery furnace of uh purification like it hurts like going through the fire hurts like Sean and I uh shoot this morning I had a I had a terrible workout today it was like we had to run with cinder block Sean had to look up what a cinder block was it's concrete as large as it, as your head we ran with that and it was terrible but it's a I don't recommend it like at all but it's like I guess like that 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 like makes you stronger though that's probably a terrible example I I hated that workout actually but going back to like the like the you you do have to go through that initial pain in order to achieve like the a stronger hope mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's actually um that ties in with some stuff i want to say too like all right so guys just in case you're just now watching and tuning in so we're doing a quote of the day all right so that can be found on my instagram i mean on my youtube channel upload past crossroads i have a playlist called title quotes of the day i'll go to that in a minute all right but then also uh i have another playlist on my youtube channel upload past crossroads title instagram post explain so this video is going to be found there and so we're doing a quote of the day and explaining this instagram post that i posted today which was you know the place of your greatest pain is the place where you hold the most kingdom authority for his strength is made perfect in your weakness man that is so freaking powerful because like you just talked about it justin like one thing that you made me think about was my time running track like god called me to run track everybody like i wasn't gonna i, I did it my sophomore year of high school all the way to my junior year of high school and then I wasn't going to do it my senior year because I got saved Saturday, September 4th, 2010. And I just wanted to focus on like worshiping God, like focusing on what my calling is, my purpose. Like in the long run, I want to figure out like what God wanted to use me for, what my purpose was on the earth. So I want to use that time in the fall of 2010 to just focus on, you know, what does God want me to do? You know, where do I fit in? What are my spiritual gifts? Because I didn't want to go. You know graduate high school and not know that that's a basic question that everybody should know if you're 15 you don't know that question that's sad like you should be it's okay if you're 15 you don't know that question but if you're 50 you know 30 like no that's inexcusable so like, <laughs> so yeah because guys can give you the answers all i gotta do is ask right so like yeah but anyways long story short fall of 2010 i was gonna run track when i was 17 or 16 17. and so um yeah god told me he wanted me to run track so I ran track my senior year. So then I ended up having to run track again my freshman year of college because God said, you know, I want you to do it again. I said, fine, I'll do it again. And I was kind of excited. I was excited to do it. But, like, it was way more than what I signed up for. Like, I did not sign up for all those workouts. I did not sign up to run. Like, the deal I had with my track coach in high school was not to run. Like, if he let me do the high jump, which is what he wanted me to do, he said I didn't have to run. And that's all we did in college track was run, man. Like the first day of practice, we had to run three miles. And not to mention the workout we had to do prior to running three miles was 50 minutes. So like all plyometrics and stuff. So we were just tired from doing that alone. Like so. And then we had to do, run a mile afterwards, you know, for a cool down. And then stretch afterwards, which took like 35 minutes. So like, yeah, it was a lot. 
right? <laughs> Y'all try doing that, especially if you're not in shape. So, like, yeah, man, it was just awful. That was an easy workout, too, by the way. Like, that's it got way worse than that. So, like, yeah, so and then he told me to do track again that next year, my senior, my sophomore year of college, and I had nothing left in the tank. I could not do it again. Like, I had nothing in my strength and in my willpower to do it. But God said, I'm going I'm to give you the strength. Just like that uh, quote said, it says, you know, for his strength is made perfect in your weakness, mm -hmm. right? So, like, literally, that's all track was for me. Track was a time or doing anything athletic. So, basically, just track, though, for me. Like, I made track into my sanctuary. I made the track a place of worship because I had to, like, go to that place. I had to be surrendered to God, submitted to God, like, focused on Jesus, focused on him in order to do it because the burden was just too much to bear. So the place of your greatest pain is a place where you hold the most kingdom value. All right, well, the kingdom authority. So like, this is so crazy, just that quote, because um, actually that's I, the sermon I'm preaching this Sunday at my dad's church ties in with that. Like I'm gonna be talking about how, um, you know, don't drop the baton, you know, like don't drop the baton of faith, like pass the baton on, right? <laughs> so many people are dropping the ball and people are missing out on seeing Jesus why? Because people are dropping the baton. They're not running their race. Like you can run your race, but you got to learn how to pick up the baton. The most important thing in a relay is, you know, the baton exchange. So if the baton exchange is off or if you drop the baton, everybody's disqualified. It don't matter how great everybody else ran before you. Right. If you don't do your part and accept the exchange within the exchange zone, that's something else, too. The exchange zone is nine point nine seconds. That's Olympic times. So. <laughs> And maybe it's like 2.5 college or high school, right? Yeah. But like Olympic time, well, it's worse than that. But Olympic time is 1.9 seconds and it's 20 meters, the exchange zone. So like if you're not within the exchange zone of passing the baton to your teammate, then you get disqualified as well. So even if you don't drop the baton, if you don't seize the, if you don't take the baton within the time frame that you're allowed to take it, you get disqualified. So same thing in life, guys. So like, mm -hmm. so your greatest pain, like, God doesn't waste the pain, the suffering, the hardships, the the adversities that we face in this life. Like he's he's at work and he's doing something for a reason. Right. And so the reason is to give you authority, to give you power for when you're weak, then you are strong. Right. So like the extent of your wounds can mean an extension of your mission field. So what are you if you want to know what your purpose is, you want to know, you know, what am I called to do? Like, what are you really passionate about? Right. I talked about this in on my uh on this youtube video the quality of this youtube video sucks so bad oh my gosh like this is why i had to learn how to turn off the uh my my internet which i need to turn off right now otherwise my videos come out fuzzy or stuff but yeah on this video i titled this video your burden is your calling on my youtube channel upload past crossroads and like with this video you know i mentioned a lot of quotes and one of the quotes i mentioned was you know the burden you bear often reveals the calling you'll embrace so if you want to know what your purpose is, you know, what burdens your heart? What grinds your gear? What, what, are, we, what are you passionate about? Like, what really irks you? So, like, that's a question for me and Justin. Like, Justin, like, what irks you? What, what is your greatest burden compared to anybody else? Like, what, what, where, what is your greatest burden and that you're doing something about right now? And so that's how I figured out what my purpose was, like, my call. And that's why I know I'm called to preach. Because, like, one of, one of the burdens I got is just hearing all these pastors on Sundays, and like they don't give any revelation, they they don't say anything profound, and they dang sure don't they don't uh they're not relevant. So like anytime they preach a sermon, like it's just generic, it doesn't touch and reach nobody. And then on top of that, like it's no change happening in the church. So the church is dying off. That's another thing, too. That's another burden I got. Like all these churches that are dying off. Y'all should look it up. How many churches are dying off right now? But I'll wait to talk about all that. Justin, I'll let you answer the question, man. Yeah, that's really interesting. I'll share a little bit of my, my burdens too. Like that's uh my bur I'm trying to figure out if this is a burden, but like something that motivated me to find my passions was um both of my grandfathers had um cancer. Like my uh maternal grandfather had lung cancer, my paternal uh grandfather had prostate cancer with bone metastasis, and my father had prostate cancer as well, and he hid that, which have irked me but like that's a it, that's something that just like bothered me was like seeing all these people suffer like that so that's a 
And it's like, that's a burden for me because like, it's, it is a very helpless disease, but like, that's where God kind of used my term inner turmoil to like turn it to a passion. Cause like I was already decent at like math and science, but I didn't know what to do with that. But like he, he, he channeled that passion towards something. So it's, that's just an example of like how uh, the suffering of the world or the fact that there's um, just the fact that there's uh that we live in a broken world. Like that's how God like is able to use that. Like, I there was one story article that I really uh, re that made me think of that exact scenario is like uh, a husband's wife had died like in this small village because she couldn't get a medical attention because like there's a there's this huge rock formation or almost like a mountain blocking any roads into like the village so he spent like the next 15 to 20 years I think it was like 17 years like carving a path through that rock formation so that um resources and medical attention could like get to that town and like to town like a uh, to towns over it's like i feel like that's how god uses suffering for uh like for the good of other people like what's that verse it says like uh for those who believe in him god uh god you god makes any situation for his good like it's so easy to just see the pain of things um like it or as like Sean was saying for his passion, like he could just like look at the pastors, see how the church needs some revitalization. He could just like go on social media and complain about that stuff. But no, like what is, what is pain without hope? What is pain without like, um, um, like a light thrown into the darkness? It's like God uses those experiences to like motivate us. Like every, uh, I guarantee you, like, the passion you hear from Sean and me, uh, whether it's like pastorship from uh, Sean or whether it's like something medical or clinical trial related to me, like you can't get that. You can't get the passion from our voices. Like you see how excited Sean gets on his videos. Like you can't you can't fabricate that type of passion. Like you can fake it a little bit, but like you're not going to make it for very long. Like there's just something genuine you see when you actually go through that kind of suffering. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, I don't know. It's almost indescribable. I, I don't want to say, oh, you can see it in their eyes. That sounds a little, eh. <laughs> but it's like, there is like, people know the difference. Like, mm -hmm. and people are going to try harder if it's something that's uh, hits close to home. Right. Like it's, it creates a genuine, authentic motivation that's irreplaceable. And like God uses that. Like it's, God doesn't make us suffer just for kicks and giggles. Um, he actually uses that for our benefit and for the world's benefit. That's how the kingdom is pushed through our motivations, through our passions. And those come from like pain and misery in a broken world. Yeah. Yeah. So like we said, guys, for today is the place where your greatest pain is the place where you hold the most kingdom authority. Like you want to know where your authority is like, one of my favorite scripture verses, I can't wait till me and Justin talk about it. It's like at the end of Luke 9 or Luke 18, it says that, you know, Christians have authority and like we're able to, you know, Jesus has given us authority and we're able to trample over scorpions. Like we're able to grab scorpions like snakes and like bend them to our will. Like we're talking about snakes, like trample over it, like stomp on it. And it's talking about the devil. Like that's how much power we and authority Jesus has given us over the devil and his foes and friends like you know any enemy of god any any adversities that we face in life like we have the power to overcome it because god made us overcomers like through christ jesus so if you're in christ you're an overcomer right so the burden you bear often reveals the calling you embrace so like what is your burden you know what really troubles you and what do you really want to change like there's a lot of things that need to change in this world a lot of things that are messed up that needs that needs to be revitalized in the church is one of them like in america like you know so like and i can you know, do another example too like what are as everybody a question you know what burdens do you have on your heart because that's your purpose that's your calling that's what god wants you to do something about so one of mine was is actually has to relate with social media like nobody else was posting the way i post now like i, I want to see so much christian content like like i could never find it like <laughs> and it's so funny like i could never find 
like what I post now on my social media page. It's like, let me just show you guys. Like, my social media page is so dope, man. Like, all right, so this is trouble don't last, right? So let's just look at a few things I post. So this one says, don't let yesterday take up too much time today. This is so dope, right? And then I said, like, some people wear their yesterdays like a garment, allow them to define who they are today. Then I said, don't give the past the power to control your future. Like, this is so dope. Like, this is a, literally a devotional. I got, like, 20 quotes right here. Like, just, just read it. Like, y'all should totally go to my channel. I mean, my, uh, any of my social media pages, but especially my Instagram. My Instagram, the caption, you can see everything. You can see everything on uh, Facebook as well. But, like, yeah, like, this is dope stuff. I haven't got cool pictures of me and Maya. Like, you know, my fiance, by the way. So, like, yeah, so y'all should, should totally check it out. But, like, yeah, that stuff was missing. And then also, like, that's another thing, too, fashion. Like, I'm trying to incorporate fashion more into my social media platforms. Because, I mean, I've seen, I've seen gospel artists and preachers that can dress. But, like, I mean, I'm, I've never seen a model or anything. But that's that's besides the point, guys. Like, that has nothing to do with the lesson. All right? But, like, you know, like I was saying, like, what burdens your heart? What troubles you? What, what what change do you know needs to happen that's not happening? And, no, and nobody's doing anything about it. That's the thing, right? right? So the pain that costs you everything will soon be will soon be a source of purpose and prosperity, guys, right? right? So God is using the pain that you're going through to bless you, right? God is using that pain that you're going through to be your breakthrough, right? So, like, if you've been raped, that is a great example, right? You were... You were hurt, and that's really hard to say. Yeah. But like God has a purpose behind the hurt and the pain, right? For you to help out anybody else to that that's gonna go through or has been through what you went through. I can use another example. People with problems from their parents, so childhood trauma, you know, anything like that, like being abused by your parents or something like that. Like any I think anybody can relate to that that's really close to their parents and knows their parents, right? And that's kind of debatable, but not really, because everybody got childhood hurt. Like, so, so like for me, like with my dad, like, you know, I, my dad, I mean, he's perfect. I had the best dad ever, but he ain't perfect. He ain't Jesus. So like, I went through some stuff, man. He grew me up. He, yeah, he grew me up like a drill sergeant, man. Like literally he just drilled everything. Nothing was good. Like even to this day, guys, like I struggle with trying to please my father. Everything I do is kind of like I'm trying to get my dad's attention. So. Mm -hmm my passion, my confidence, like when my YouTube channel, my social media pages, like it's all vying for my father's attention and approval, which is crazy. But that's just how it is. It, but that's like, that's how God used that for his purposes. Because am I trying to please my father on earth? All right. Yeah, that's cool. But like all together, I'm trying to please my father in heaven. So like, how I'm trying to please my father and trying to please him and try to, you know, get, get his affirmation and stuff like that. That's what I should be doing with God. Right. And that's what I do. Right. Because <laughs> God already has affirmed me. He's already approved me. So, like, even if my father doesn't, even if anybody else doesn't, it don't matter. God has. So, like, you know, so your pain is your purpose. So, that, like, see, I got a lot of stuff that, like, that's pain that's just built up. And, like, you have to utilize it. God wants you to do something with it. He doesn't want you to just keep on building it up, building it up, making it worse and worse and not receiving any healing from it. And this is the healing process, right? Hurt people, hurt people, right? But heal people, heal other people, heal, heal other people, right? So like, yeah, so like that's the part. This is the Christian life. The Christian life is about helping out one another, man, lifting each other up through our burdens. Like, you know, you know, putting each other on our shoulders and, you know, being shoulder bears. You know, I'm just throwing stuff out, guys. You guys get what I'm saying, man. We got to we got to unify together, work together, fight for one another. Right. So like calling is where your talents and burdens collide. So you want to know what your calling is? You want to find your calling? You want to have a live in a purpose filled life? Figure out your talents? Man, it's your burden. <laughs> you know, calling is where your talents and your burdens collide together. It's coming together. God's mission and working everything perfectly in, in, in line with his will, man. It's beautiful. So if you find your purpose, if you want to find your purpose in life, find your wound. So your greatest ministry will most likely come out of your greatest hurt, right? So, yeah, Justin, I'll let you go, man. I'm talking a lot, man. <laughs> Fire though, I like that. Yeah. See, that's the kind of passion you can't imitate. See, everybody, that's like that's like the that's like the genuine pastorship you get from pain. But yeah, it's um, it's it's like uh, I was just thinking, like how 
I'm trying to think how to start this because you, you said some really good points. It's like, it is really important to like, see what is the need there? Like, it's very easy, especially nowadays. Like, oh, someone was saying like, uh, the U S is very resource heavy. Like that changes how we parent that changes how, uh, we conduct marriages. That's how we, um, choose a job is like just our number of resources changes a lot of things. So, uh, I don't want to say it makes us soft and makes us weak, but it does like definitely makes us not try as hard. A lot of times, like if we look for something that's comfortable, like that's, um, like sometimes that's not using our that's not using our skills to the max like if we're just doing something comfortable like then anybody could have been doing it like anybody like y your job might not even be all that necessary if you're not doing all that much and that's not to say like not every job is important like you some people think oh well like uh garbage truck men are like uh it's such an unimportant job no like that's a very necessary job someone has to do that but there's a difference between like a job that um, may not seem illustrious versus a job that's probably just like too easy for you. Like you have to you have to challenge yourself because that means that's a job that requires a need. Like that's a job that not everybody can do. Like that's a job that God has put you there because um, because you're at like just the right amount of balance of like this is too easy for somebody versus this is too hard for somebody. Like that, I was reading a study where it's saying like, that's, that's like, that's like the sweet spot. It's, uh, for, to keep off Alzheimer's or to keep yourself from like getting too old is like, if it's too easy, then you don't challenge yourself and you like, um, your brain rots. If it's too hard, like you lose interest, you won't try as hard, like your, or your, burning the candle at both ends. So there's like a sweet spot of like challenging yourself, but God puts you there because he knows that there's a need for that. He knows that like somebody needs to be doing this, these jobs because there's uh, there's a passion, there's a need, and there are other people who really need that, who really need the effort and the resources that you're providing. So I do like that there is, I do like what Sean was saying is that God uses you for a specific need or a specific desire and like god god will use your past god will uh doesn't matter like where that past came from it could have come from uh could have come from like something from sean where it's like it started out where he was trying to please his father but it moves into something more genuine or it could have started out because like you were kind of interested in the topic but then you like get really into it like it God can use like any type of background. That always amazes me is that God uses a lot of, God will use like any story or walk of life to like bring you to where you need to be. So that's that's all I wanted to say for this section is that God will use you where you're at for like a need that's needed at the time. Man, you're so bad, Justin. I love you, bro. Like, that's it right there, man. That's what I was trying to say. Like your experiences, your past, your hardship, just everything you have ever went through, like, is for a reason. Like, God wastes nothing. Nothing. Like, so, like, all of us have different experiences. There's not one person on earth, even me and my older brother, like, we're literally like twins. We went through everything together. And we're different. Like, you don't come out the same as other people when you go through certain experiences and stuff like that. Like, are there some people like you and y'all are on the same wavelength and y'all are the same tribe? All right, yeah, sure, bet. But we are we all are different. We're all different members in the body of Christ. There's no member that is the exact same. Even the body parts on our body. We got two thumbs, but are both of your thumbs the same? We have two eyes, but are both of your eyes the same? Heck no. My left eye is partially blind, if not blind. My right eye is like 20-20 vision. Like, it's perfect, man. But, like, my left eye can see really good, like, atoms and elements and, like, it can see anything, particles, like, close up, even though it sucks, like, you know. <laughs> but, like, yeah, we're all different. That's the whole point. And we all have strengths and we all have weaknesses. So, like, God uses it all for his glory and for his purposes. So, especially when it comes to your pain, we have not all been through the same type of pain, but mm -hmm. we 
there has been people who have went through the same stuff that we went through that has insight, have revelate, has res, has revelations, and can help you through what you're going through, right? There's always somebody. You're not a lone wolf in this, right? <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun. You're not the only person that has a hard life, right? Everybody does in some kind of way. Does some people have it harder than other people? Yeah, sure, maybe. But I guarantee you there's somebody that got it worse than you, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the whole point of this video is the place of your greatest pain is the place where you hold the most kingdom authority. You want to know what your purpose is. You want to know what you're supposed to be doing for God's kingdom, for his glory. You're supposed to be helping out people that went through the same crap that you went through, right? Yeah, that's the scripture verse. It says, comfort those in the same way that I comforted you. Justin, say something. Man. I'm going I'm to look at the scripture verse. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, and so, like, it's, and it's, uh, again, like, it's, um. I'm trying to, I have, I have this concept I'm trying to voice out. Like hindsight is always 2020 as well. Like when you get thrown into it, like um, what Sean was saying makes me think of like, don't give up because you never know like what benefit it will have like in the long run as well. Like we've been talking about past pain, but you could be going through pain right now as well. Like you endure that so you can experience something greater down the road because you, you don't know what situation God has put you in until later on in life. As we said, hindsight's twenty twenty. You don't realize how important your situation is until uh, later on. And it's like, uh, we were trying to get my uh, mother-in-law to do like physical therapy for like her shoulder. But it's like, um, she wanted to quit because like she's saying, oh, it's making it worse. But the doctor was saying, no, it's like, um, you have to kind of get through the pain in order to heal. Like you have to get through the initial pain in order to have the benefits later. And that applies exactly for like the, the pain you're going through right now you don't know what this pain will um bring about like when i was working out this morning i wanted to give up i wanted to throw that cinder block away uh but like again the bad example i still hated that workout but like i stuck through it because like i want to like uh, take care of my body take care of the temple because i knew like the way god has engineered our bodies is like once we get through that initial pain of like working out like we'll get stronger for it mm -hmm. Man, I, I'm I'm actually I'm glad I I'm kind of proud of how I voiced that. I was while you were talking, I was thinking, man, how am I gonna say this? But I, no, I, I said that perfectly. Yeah, yeah. The verse I want to say to everybody was this one. All right, so we're gonna look at this verse. So Second Corinthians, chapter one, verses three through four, and I'm reading from the New International Version Bible. Well, the New Living Translation Bible. All right, says so it says, "All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ." God is merciful. God is our merciful father and the source of all comfort. So that's what God is. He's the source of all comfort. <laughs> Man, if you need somebody that just understands what you're going through, go to God. God knows exactly how you feel, what you're going through. Why? Because he, we are him. Like literally God created us. We came in his image, right? So our emotions and our feelings, you think they just come from out of nowhere? No, God has the same feelings, right? So he knows how to comfort you through what you're going through. Why? Because he has feelings too, right? So God is a merciful God. Merciful, man. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. This is why, this is why <laughs> he comforts us so that we can comfort others. I want to mark this up so bad. So just in case anybody's not paying attention, right? So this is why, this is why we are, this is why we receive the victory. This is why we receive breakthroughs. This is why we receive miracles or anything like that. Why? So that we can comfort others in the way that God has comforted us when he brings us through our troubles, when he brings us through our pain. And rest assured, believer, you will make it through what you're going through, right? And if you don't believe that you will, man, you are doubting God. You ain't living by faith, man. Like this is this is from grace to grace, from strength to strength, from victory to victory. It's a saying in the Bible. I can't remember what it is. Justin, if you do, just go ahead and say it. But it says, from glory to glory, from grace to grace. Like, man, like, this is the Christian life. We receive victory from victory, glory to glory. We go from blessing to blessing. Like, we don't take no steps back. Like, you're going to make it through what you're going through. You're going to receive the victory. So when God comforts you, after you make it through what you went through, you better comfort somebody else. You better help somebody else through what they're going through, man. Because this life's hard. When they are, are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. Man, this is so good. I love that scripture verse so much, man. Like, you want to know what your purpose is, what you should be doing. Like, are you doing this? 
if you ain't, man, you ain't in one accord with God's will and doing what he's calling you to do, your most effective ministry will come out of your deepest hurts. All things work together for good to those that love the Lord and call according to his purpose. His purpose, his will is for you <laughs> to always like glorify him and give him praise, right? Especially when he brings you out of adversity, out of hardship. When he gives you a new chapter, oh, I'm preaching now, Justin. Well, let's pre <laughs> life's a book, man. Let's let's do this, man, because I've been in this for a long time. All right, let me show y'all what doing devotionals all the time does for you. All right, so uh, and the way I do my social media posts, right? So life is like a book, right? And so every single day is a new page in your book of life, right? Every let's say every month is a new chapter. Right. And then every uh, every month is a new book. Right. But then every year is a new series. Like, so like, <laughs> it's a whole new series. Right. So that's what life is. Life is a book. You got to learn how to turn the page. You got to learn how to move on. Right. So many people are living in their hurt. So, let, yeah, let's play devil's advocate with this one. So the quote of the day was this. The quote of the day was the place of your greatest pain is the place where you hold the most kingdom authority. How are you going to hold kingdom authority if all you do is wallow in your pain and think about your pain, and that's all you think about? You got to learn how to move on. And then you have to learn how to move on so that you can tell other people how to move on through what they're going through. So how are you going to tell other people how to move on what they're going through if you ain't ever moved on for what you're going through? Right? That's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to heal you. God wants to heal you. Right? So... <laughs> This is the Christian life from glory to glory, from victory to victory. I got to find that scripture verse too. I do. Yeah. While well, you look for that, I just want to jump in. I don't want to interrupt, but like, okay. I, I do love that analogy. And I've used that before too. It's like your life is like a book. It has so many chapters. I hate when people, well, I shouldn't hate, like it's their own experience. I can't uh, criticize them for it, but I don't like it when people like look back on like a relationship or a time in their life with just like saying, oh, I regret this time of my life. Yeah, sometimes it's bad, but like that's that's made you who you are now. Like we have to appreciate uh, what the what chapters God has given us. And it's like, especially like relationships, like people say, oh, like after they break up, they'll be like, oh, that was like three years wasted of my life. Um, mm. But no, it's like, yeah, maybe that's not who you end up with, but like you, hopefully you learn from it. Like you might've, gotten some wounds, gotten some scars, like that happens. But it's like, if that's a part where it's like, it can make or break you. Like if you can use that experience to become better or like be a better husband or be a better wife or be a better um, son or daughter, it's like, that's like that, then that wasn't a waste. Like you, like you can't look back on your life of like when you were like a football star or track star and now you're like, you got a gut or a beer belly it's like you can't like look back on those glory days and say, oh, that was like, I don't have that anymore. But no, it's like who it's made you who you are now. Like maybe it's worked on your work ethic or something. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I just had to say something because I do like that analogy. It's like we do have chapters in our life and like none of them are a waste. Like some of them can be traumatic, but we can use those like God can use those. Right. Well, I love sorry, that. Sean, have you found what you're looking for? Yeah, and you stepped on my freaking toes. You know, that's what I told my ex when we broke up in 2018. Uh, I still remember the date. Monday, June 4, 2018. Yeah. I said, like, I wasted my time with you. Three years of my life, I can't get uh, back. Like, <laughs> and you just said that. But, like, you know, that was right. so powerful. But, like, this verse goes with what we were saying, guys. So it's Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. I'm going to read the King James Version Bible. Because it says it better. It says, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. So like from glory to glory, from adversity, from adversity, from trial, from trial, from pain after pain after pain. You want to know why you suffer in your life and why life's so awful? Like, this is for me too, guys. Like, that's my question for God. Like, dang, can I not have, just have it easy in life? Like, no, you can't, Sean. Because from glory to glory, like, you receive the glory through your pain, guys. Your pain is your purpose. It's the reason why you're here. That's why Jesus went through what he went through. So he could be exalted. You want to be exalted? Like, that's what a believer is going to be, exalted, guys. Like, we're going to be 
ordering the angels around. We're going to have authority in heaven. Like, this, it's not an easy task. Like, you have to really know what the Lord wants. You got to know the Lord for yourself. So what you think this earth is? It's a training ground. From pain to pain, suffering to suffering, adversity to adversity, it never stops. Why? Because John 16, 33 says, Jesus promised us. He said, in this world, you'll have tribulations, pain to pain, glory to glory. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Glory to glory. You're going to overcome everything you go through, guys. So, like, we're being changed into this image of the Lord through our suffering, through our pain, so that we can help out others and tell them about how good our God is. So your purpose is hidden within your wounds. When your talents in the needs of the world cross, there your calling lies, right? I said that earlier kind of in a way. And then also uh, God can use your pain to point you and lead you toward his purpose for you. So like the title of today's video, your pain is your purpose. Purpose is usually found through pain and God doesn't allow pain without purpose. So let's look at this first real quick. So this is on, I'm reading my caption, by the way, guys. So if you want to know where these gems are found, that's where it's found, man. Like, this is why I make posts like this. So I can just do videos on the fly. So like uh, one quote says, you know, God doesn't allow pain without a purpose, right? Here goes the verse, First Peter chapter 5, verse 10. It says, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect establish, strengthen you, and settle you. So this is why we suffer in life. This is why we go through pain. This is the reason for your pain. This is why your pain is your purpose. Just like Justin said to start off the video, your, the suffering you're going through is to settle you, to mature you, to make you into who you are. Have we all suffered in the same exact way? Heck to the no, guarantee you ain't had my dad. <laughs> you ain't lived my life you don't know what it's like being Sean Christopher Jenkins at all I, mean, I guarantee you can't be me even if you oh, you would have crumbled you would have committed suicide in 2016, 2017 like I almost did so like just like for me I can't take what I can't handle what you're going through that's a beautiful thing about this life God will never give you more than what you can handle but you know what he will test you and he will give you more than what you can handle. Why? So you can lean on him. That's the only reason why he will put more on you so that you can learn how to depend on him. Learn how that in your weakness, you are made strong for when his strength is his for his strength is made perfect in your weakness. Right. So mm -hmm. like this is what Jesus is doing through us, through our surf, through our sufferings, through our adversities. Right. So, man, if you have suffered, man, you better praise the Lord because now God can use you. Just don't waste the suffering. Don't miss the message behind what you're going through. That's the biggest thing. What's the revelation that God's trying to teach you through what you're going through right now? So many people ain't paying attention and listening. You know, my sheep hear my voice and they and they can hear me and they know me when I speak to them. He's speaking to you through your pain right now. He's telling you how to how to utilize that pain, how to wield the sword, how to wield the lightsaber, right? He's showing you this is the way, like Mandalorian, guys. Have y'all seen Mandalorian? <laughs> So like, yeah, man, like figure out what that way is for you to how to utilize that pain. So to get to your purpose, you'll have to pass through your pain. Pain produces passion and your passion will push you into purpose. I like what Justin said earlier, man. Justin, I want you to talk after this. Uh, like it was so powerful. You remember how that person asked about passion? We got to do a video on that. Um, she asked basically on LinkedIn. We're going to hook. We're going to hook you. I'm going to send you this video too, by the way. All right, I hope you watch all the way to this point. That that girl that asked that, but like she asked, like you know, how do I, how does my passion lead to my purpose? Basically, you know, what are what are my passions? How do I figure out my passions? So guys, that goes back to what I said earlier. Like, do you want to find your purpose? Find your pain. Find what really grinds your gear. Find what really irks you that you want to change. So mm -hmm. pain produces passion. Your suffering, that that thing that irks you, I guarantee. It's the thing you're most passionate about. So for me, it's the church. Like, it's crazy. Like, because I didn't want to preach. I really, if I had it my way, I want to avoid people. Because with people comes problems. The more people you got to deal with, the more problems you got to deal with. And then the more egos. Like, I can't, I, <laughs> I mean, I'm a people person. I think that's obvious. Like, people love me and I love people. But I don't, uh, I, I like being by myself sometimes. I don't like taking a risk of like having to deal with bad people, right? 
but that's the thing. Like, that's another thing that irks me. Just bad people. Like, people that are rude. Like, you don't treat other people the way that you want to be treated. So it, it makes me say something. I'll be the one to say something. Just like with the board examiner process in the ME church and the African Methodist Episcopal Church where I'm trying to get my ordination and try to become a pastor. Like, there's so much stuff that they have done for thousand, well, 250 years or something like that. And they think it's okay. It's not okay. This is a new age. <laughs> you want, We don't have to do that no more. Like, tradition, just because it's traditional don't mean it's right. Like, just because it's something that we always have done doesn't mean we always need to do it. Like, there's change that needs to be made. That's why there's no kids there. That's why there's no young people my age and Justin's age. There's no 30-year-olds, 20-year-olds. After you hit 18, you don't want to have anything to do with the AME church. And it's for a reason. Right? And it irks me. Like, you know, that they're not doing anything to reach my generation. But that's okay. I'm going to do my part. Right? So, again, that's where my pain comes into play. Pain produces passion, and your passion will push you into your purpose. See, I don't even know how I'm going to get people my age to come to church uh, or to, like, be a part of the AME church. Because, honestly, if I wasn't preaching, I wouldn't be a part of the AME church either. But, like, God called me to help out the weak, to help out the ones that need help the most, the people who need the church that need help the most is the ME church. They, the people in leadership in ME church think that they got it all together. They're all perfect. Like we are good. Like we are. No, y'all not. We're dying off. When y'all dead and I'm y'all age, the church probably going to be non-existent in this area, in Tennessee. So like in Kentucky. But I, I pray that's not so. I pray all these young people coming up, like we can fight the good fight of faith and really get them to you know, work together, work with young people, get us to, you know, get the young people to give the young people what they want, give them what they need, not what you want and what y'all used to, like doing that whole AME service, like the same way for a youth service. All right, I'm going to stop. <laughs> Just <laughs> Yeah. And it's, um, that kind of makes me think of like, uh, when I'm, when you, when you, uh, ride a motorcycle, like the, you do something that's counterintuitive, like um, called leaning into the curve. Like a lot of times you would almost try to like slow down or avoid the curve. But what you actually do is like you accelerate and lean into the curve a little bit. And that lets you hit like the sweet spot with the tires and the steering. And that's kind of what you do with your pain as well. Sometimes you have to lean into the pain. Like a lot of times when we go through something traumatic, like we we tend to try to avoid that like we try to avoid the triggers we avoid the things that make us feel sad but like something i found like during relationships or marriage and like just with people in general is like you you can't really grow if you like avoiding all the things that trigger you or that make you sad or like make you upset you kind of have to work through that stuff and like i'm not saying like you have to if you if you've been wronged once, you don't suddenly like take on the a job that fixes that. You do have to like go through this trial period. You have to go through this healing so that you can be effective. Because what's that saying? Like you have to help yourself before you help others. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, I do want to say like you have to lean into the pain. Like it sucks. It sucks like working out or like interacting with something that you just don't like. But it does make you a stronger person. Like it's it's again it's not an overnight thing like sean and i never advertise quick fixes or overnight things but we do like we say like it's a thing you have to do daily you have to like take up your cross daily you have to wake up each morning with a decision and conviction like i just like that word conviction to like gradually change gradually grow stronger gradually like handle that um handle the pain that you've been delivered because like again like god is able to use that we have to we have to trust that god can do that for us because our hope is found in god like we can't find hope in anything else like we we have pain because of the world but so we can't find we can't exclusively find um our hope in the world in such a broken world that delivers pain no we find that hope in god and we have to trust him that he can use that pain for something Grant just messaged us, man. So I'm messaging him back. Grant, we're gonna do a video on the question you asked on Wednesday, man. We're coming, we're coming for you, man. The question you asked, man. Appreciate the question. All right. And Justin, man, he's preaching, man. You are preaching, man. I'll end the video, man. Let's go ahead and end this one. So, guys, the last thing I want to say is, you know, God's going to turn your wounds 
into wisdom and wealth. So God's going to turn your wounds into wisdom and wealth. So like that thing that you're going through, that pain, that suffering, that adversity, man, God's going to make you, he's giving you wisdom and insight in order to help out somebody else. When you hear that they're going through the same thing that you went through, right? And then also it's going to lead to prosperity, to blessings, to wealth. So God's going to mm. turn around. He's going to turn the ashes into something beautiful. He's going to turn mm. the dirt into something miraculous, just like he did with us. God is a God of miracles, man. He turns things around all the time. All you got to do is just keep on living. So your pain is your purpose, right? So figure mm. out what God is doing through your pain, man. And just to give you guys a little a little bit, a little teaser, because we, me and Justin may do this video. I don't know if I have time because I got class at six. Yeah, I don't have time. <laughs> but uh, guys, like, here goes a teaser. Me and Justin going to do this video soon. But um, yeah, it's Proverbs 15, 22. It says, plans fail for a lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. So it's funny how the place that uh, cost me the most suffering, the most pain, it, it's the Emmy church. I ain't gonna lie. So like, <laughs> so like, <laughs> it's the Emmy church. Is, oh, is, I feel like if you've seen more than three videos on Sean's channel, you know who it is. Yeah, so like, and it was funny, you know, it they didn't cause me pain until I entered the ministry and seeing what really goes on in leadership behind the scenes, behind closed doors. Like, bro, because it's all this disunity and dysfunction and carnal, the carnal way of living from the pastors, the people in leadership. Like, this is why the Emmy Church is failing. This is exactly why. But mm. the beautiful thing behind it, see, your pain is is your purpose. So God called me. I, I didn't even know he called me, but now I do. Like, you know, because I, I just went to help the Emmy Church because I knew they needed more pastors. I knew mm. that I could help. I know what I bring to the table. And God, it through me and in me is off the chain. Like, so I ain't me talking now, me living life now, I'm living for Christ. Like, it's Christ living through me. I died a long time ago on Saturday, September 4, 2010. So, like, the beautiful thing about this whole process is just from me entering the AME church is, you know, I have a lot of advisors. I have a lot of people there to help me and counsel me. Like, these are people who've been preaching for 50, 40, 30, longer than I've been alive, like preachers. Like, uh -huh. you know, it'll be just imagine, guys, whatever your purpose is. Let's 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 talk game real quick. So if you want to be a cook, right? Imagine if you were with all the top chefs in the whole entire world. Like you had their number, they were your neighbors, and like you could just talk to them whenever. Like, where you where you think you would be in life? Like, if you if you wanted to be a chef, and you were with all the people on the Food Network, like you know what I mean. <laughs> and then for Justin too, like, what if Justin was with, was with all the Einsteins in the world? Like, Justin, do you? I don't know, Justin. You gotta you gotta talk to me about that. Like, who do you need to be around? Because I I don't know. But like for me, like if I'm around, see, I'm already like this from other pastors, like just being around other pastors in the AME church. And none of them are as big as Joel Osteen, Stephen mm. Furtick, John Piper, John McArthur. So the question is, when I get around those type of preachers, what am I going to turn into? You know, <laughs> I mean, like, the, and I, it, just debatable, like some of y'all think some of them are false prophets, but just. Just help me out, like Charles Chuck Swindoll, Billy Graham, like just people, just the top pastors in the world, whatever that is to you. If I'm around those pastors, what will I turn into? And that goes back to this scripture verse. You know, plans fail for a lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. And you only get to, you only get to that point when you allow your pain, you, when you allow God to use your pain for His glory, right? And that's what I'm doing. Like, so I just pray the same thing for you guys. Like, even though I have a problem with the Emmy Church, I. I really don't want to be around people in leadership that are real cocky and arrogant. I know everything. You know nothing, John. And then treat me like the scum of the earth when, and don't show me none of God's love. Like, I have a problem with that. Like, that's my pain. You right? <laughs> so obviously I'm doing something about it, right? There's, there's changes that's been made. And that's one thing I don't like that they've been saying. Like, they said, I haven't heard it too, Justin. Like, I hear it all the time. Like, people have been telling me in leadership. They said, man, we we hear, heard that you're making a lot of changes, man. Like, you're, you're 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 fighting for change and everything. I'm like, bro, I've been quiet. I haven't been doing anything. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to be quiet, but like on my social media pages, yeah, I be saying stuff, and like every once in a while, I say stuff to the right people, right? But like, yeah, guys, so you guys get what I'm saying. Your pain is your purpose, so don't allow your pain to make you 
crumble and be in a feeble position and not do anything with it. Let mm. God use it for his glory and for his purposes. So you guys get it. Justin, you good, man? Yeah, I think I'm good. All right. That's, man. A, man, that's a great place to stop. I like that. All right. All right. So, guys, y'all already know the drill, man. I have the best social media pages ever, man. If you don't know that, go to them, man. I already showed you my Instagram page, how, how many quotes I got on just one post. So you'll be blessed if you just go to my Instagram. Make sure to like everything. I, I doubt you will. It's 3,946 posts, man. Like, a lot. Good, yeah, good luck liking everything. Make sure to share share and comment. Tell people about my social media pages, man. I work really, 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 really hard on them, man. Like, ridiculously hard. I'm about to start school, seminary, guys. So I'm still going to post, but it's going to kill me. It's, it's going to, I just hope I can balance it. So you guys pray for me. So, like I said, on Upload Past Crossroads, I have a whole lot of playlists on here. If you scroll down, to my YouTube channel, Upload Past Crossroads, you'll see all the videos I've done with Justin. So go to his playlist, Justin Lee Howe, to uh, check out all the rest of the videos that we did. Then also, if you really enjoyed this video and this topic, I have a playlist titled, you know, your purpose is your pain, your purpose is your ministry, the purpose of pain. So I done, me and Justin have done a lot of videos on that, and I've done a lot of Bible studies and stuff on it and Sunday school lessons. So check out that if you want to receive even more revelation from that. And then also this video, ties in with this video as well you know your burden is your calling check out that and yeah and instagram post explain you want to see me go through instagram posts me and justin talk about instagram posts check out that i think i'm good on playlist though yeah all right and then justin's youtube channel is chaplain's log so make sure to subscribe click the bell so you you're notified you know whenever he uploads another video and then like comment and share and again do that on my social media pages as well especially my youtube and then here goes his Facebook page, Justin Lee House. So be friend him on there. If you got any questions, you can DM us any of the questions you got on our Facebook pages, and we'll get back to you. And we'll do a video on the question that you asked. But I pray you everybody was blessed by this video. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. And the lag is awful. All right. All right. Y'all stay blessed. You didn't move. Yeah, you didn't move too much, though. Yeah. You look like I'm talking Chinese. You've had, you've had some videos where you're just like everywhere, and it's like, oh, then the lag is bad. Let me figure this out. All right, guys. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace. <laughs>